What's Hello? up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the Godless Engineer, and today we are talking with Blaine, and uh, Blaine is somebody that I've uh, conversed with on the Facebook page, uh, and he's been rather active on the posts, and so, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to uh, sit down and talk with Blaine uh, about, you know, what what you believe, uh, Blaine, and uh, why you believe it and everything like that. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you had in mind for us to discuss today. I'm genuinely, uh, like, um, interested in knowing why you believe in God and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what convinced you that God well, exists yeah. and, and what convinced you of Christianity. Well, so uh, yeah. maybe we could start there. So you, what, what you're asking me, what convinced me of Christianity? Right, like what? What convinced you of of either God's existence or Christianity? I, either one that you want to tackle first. All right. So for me personally, like I, I've said in the, in a few um, of the conversations we've had on the Facebook page that you have, I've said that I was raised in the Catholic home, so um, sort of not really watching my father be so Catholic, so it didn't really rub off on me that much. And it was more like it was shoved down my throat by other family members and people at the church. It's almost like I have the same problem with a lot of people where it's believe or don't question, they just believe it, you know what I mean? And it came to a point where I was <clears throat> in my, you could say, Sunday school or youth or whatever you'd call it. And I came to one of our priests or pastors and I just said, look, I'm not, I'm not really believing in, in these things. Like I, I understand what you're saying and... I hear it all the time, and I like being around these people, but I don't really believe any of it. And the guy gave me a a, a Bible verse. I can't even remember what it was, so I didn't even listen to it. He gave me a Bible verse, and I told him, but I don't really understand how that answers my question. And he just told me, look, that's the word of God. Don't question it. You know what I mean? And sort of from there, I <clears throat> sort of lost lost my interest in it. I thought, you know what, this doesn't exist. I'm doing, I'm doing well in my academics. I'm... My business is going, I, I started a business when I was 19, stayed out of school, so that was going well. And that I, was, I was always like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing all this on my own. God is not doing anything for me. I didn't pray once, but I got, I'm getting what I want. Every time I work for something, I get it. Do you know what I mean? And uh -huh. they are family mem I have family members that always used to tell me that you have these blessings because we're praying for you. Do you know what I mean? And I, even in those days, I used to be like, you know what, you guys are just... You know, like like I've like I've said in a few um in the conversations or, or um interactions we've had on the Facebook thing, um I rolled my eyes and I was exactly like a lot of the people in the comments or a lot of the people that's in that um group that you have on Facebook. I've said and they held the exact same arguments against people that believe and I won the the arguments or I felt like I won the arguments in terms of other people listening to me speak to somebody who believes. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but. So, so, like I, what I mentioned now, I started a business when I was 19. So I was always the type of person that wanted to improve my situation. Regardless of how good it okay. got, there's always an improvement on it. You know what I mean? And okay. it just got to a point where it, 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 it was like, I started doing things that I wanted to do all the time. Like I, I, I had the time to do it. I, I was by the means to do it. So I started doing it. But there was just something that wasn't there. That, that I knew other people that had less than me. They had it. You know what I mean? They weren't necessarily religious people, but they but they had what I was talking about in terms of their behavior. And as I've mentioned also on the Facebook, the positive karma, that's a sort of a, a, a language you guys understand. So that's where it's, it sort of just hit me and it got, I got the memory of the type of things we used to talk about when I was in church when I was younger and how it, it doesn't sound like it makes sense when I was that age, but now when I was, as I was loving life and being in different situations, I started seeing that how you can apply certain verses, not literally, but to the actual um, situation that you're in specifically. And not also relying on the Bible, but also having a relationship with God himself. So it had a lot to do with also, like I've also said, like I mentioned it again in one of the interactions we've had on Facebook, it's it's got to do with changing your heart and not about being academic about it and seeing I'm looking for fingerprint evidence or medical records or any of those things. It was more like I was already happy, you could say, but I went from from happy and being okay all the time to being totally fulfilled. 
and I, I, I promise you, I don't have a bad mood. I don't have a bad time. It's just like I'm at the point where through through Jesus, I would say, uh, you could, like most of you might like, roll your eyes at this, but through Jesus, I understand life to a point where there are no bad or good situations. I just be, if that makes sense. And because I... Um, because okay, I, okay. Uh, well... Yeah? So 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 you say that there are no good or bad situations. I don't know what that means. And, um, and in, okay. Like in, in my life, because of my relationship with God, I have situations in life, but they are just situations. Some things can be seen as bad, but they are not bad for me when I when I when I encounter them. And they aren't things that are that are good either, if that makes sense. It's not that I don't enjoy anything, I don't love anyone or anything like that. It's more of Nothing can devastate me, and nothing can get me to a point of overjoyous, overjoyousness to a point where I could get disappointed. In other words, do you know what I mean? Okay, so um, <clears throat> just coming at this from a very skeptical point of view, this just sounds mm-hmm. like a very anecdotal sort of reason to believe in God. Like, oh, you find personal utility in the belief in God, but how do you discern your belief in this one particular version of God versus other people who believe who have the exact same experiences as you, but they believe in a Mm -hmm. different form of God. How do you explain that? You see, I can't really speak on, 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 on someone else that I don't know the specific situation of because I have know a lot. Of, I have a lot of friends who are Muslim. Some of my best friends are Muslim, and I have best friends who are atheists as well. Like so the closest of my friend groups, and we have these kind of conversations all the time. And I would say that the other the other religions or other belief systems they don't require a change of heart. If I could make that example, and like you said, I know it's anecdotal, but the thing with Muslims, with the Muslims are, for example, they are a way of life. Like behave a certain way, so this is qualifies you to get to this point. This is what you do with your brothers. This is what you do with women. It's almost like a legal document. So you do this, and this is what happens. But when it comes to actually following Christ, I don't know what 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 kind of um, um, church you were brought up in, but if you with the actual um, following of Christ, you will find that your heart changes and turns towards trying to be like Christ, and. For people that have fallen away and came back to it, it's almost like you realize a lot when you actually turn your heart to Christ, you realize a lot of what you were doing that was actually burdening yourself. Like something you did three months ago that happened now. Like, okay, anyone? I can see you want to say something. Well, I mean, it just sounds like a no true Scotsman fallacy right there. I mean, you're trying to invalidate other people's beliefs by claiming that they weren't truly Christian or they weren't really. I mean, you've done that to me on the Facebook page. You told me that because I suffered Mm -hmm. from depression, that means that I was never really Christian, which is really shitty, by the way. Uh, I don't don't think you you understood it the the right way, but okay, carry on. I was listening. How 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 did I misunderstand it? You literally told me that because I suffered from depression, I wasn't a true Christian. And the people that told me I suffered from depression, they were just trying to get me hooked on drugs, which is not true at all. So uh, it, it just seems to me like you have this perception of anybody mm-hmm. that doesn't have the exact same experience as you with God as being not true believers with I mean, is that, I feel like that's what you're trying to communicate right now. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. But what I'm saying is okay. that, that the the original Christian church, as an example, or the following of Christ, the original following of Christ have been diluted over these past years, that the normal view of Christianity is not real Christianity. I don't know if you're familiar with the word heresy or, or heretic behavior. Uh, yeah, but I mean, everybody has their own definition of quote unquote, true Christianity. And, um, unless you're out there enslaving people and, uh, you know, taking, uh, uh, sexual slaves, uh, purchasing women with goods and, and money, then I feel like you're probably not actually, uh, employing true Christianity. If you want to get back to what the original Christians believed. You're referring to some of the verses in the Old Testament in the Bible. 
Well, the Old Testament, yeah, sure, but um, also just the the way that uh, societies were back then, because like societies back uh-huh. then, you would purchase women with dowries, uh, you know, and and it didn't really matter if the women wanted to marry the man. Um, and so, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of, of, of different, um, small things about original Christianity. If you want to get back to Mm -hmm. what the original Christians believed that, um, a lot of people just don't even employ now. And then if God is eternal and is the same yesterday as he is today, as he will be in the future, um, and Jesus is God, then it seems like you should adhere to what God said, not only in the old Testament, but in the new Testament, and in the New Testament, Jesus said that he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. And considering he's not abolishing any of the old laws and he tells people all the time to adhere to the laws of Moses, kind of seems like maybe you should be enslaving people from other countries. Like, I feel like the fact that you're not doing that, despite the fact that God directly commanded the uh, Israelites to do that, I, I feel like you know, you're not adhering to whatever you you might consider Uh true Christianity. Um, So I feel all of this, uh, me bringing all of this up is just to point out the Uh ridiculous nature of true Christianity. No, I understand. I understand what you what you're saying. And like I've said, I've made these points already, like when I was in the in that sort of space. But I'll tell you this this much. The Bible is not the word of God. It's the word from God. People who say it's a word of God is another one of is another part of this Protestant heresy that came from the original church. So when you talk, when you interpret the, the 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 verses about slavery, when they say obey obey your slave master as you would obey Christ, for example, that's one of the 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 famous ones. I'm sure you know that one. But uh-huh. what it actually means is, if you actually put it down to today's time, is if you respect the person above you as in terms of when you're doing your work and your job, that's how things get built. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, let's say you, let's say we have you're changing the time on the farm. First, I mean, you're talking about Christian heresies, but you yourself are engaging in reinterpretation of Scripture from what it was originally meaning. Um, and and I feel like the assumption there is that you somehow know the mind of God to be able to interpret what God actually meant in this verse, but uh, in actuality, what the verse literally means is that, you know, there, there are slaves at the time and, you know, slaves should obey their masters. Like, you know, you should be a, a obey Christ, which kind of paints the general yeah. believer in a, a slave position to Christ, uh, which is also mm-hmm. really toxic. But um, the, I mean, the original meaning is that, you know, there are slaves, slavery is okay. Uh, slaves are taken all the time and slaves should obey their masters. I mean, that's what it means. So you reinterpreting it into some other different context is just you engaging in your own, in, in heresy, which is what you're trying to condemn as well. But as I've said, the, 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 the Bible is not the word of God. It's the word from God. So those are people. What is the distinction been, there? Like, like, what is the distinction that you're making? What's the difference between the, uh, the word being of God and the word being from God? Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand the distinction there. Because even though the people who wrote the verses in the Bible and all of the books of the Bible, they were imperfect themselves. They were not perfect people. Jesus was the only okay. perfect. Okay, so. God's when it came to the prophets and the disciples, God spoke through them. So it's the word of God, but they were there to interpret and write it down. And they had their own imperfections, their own corruptions. If that makes sense. The, okay, the, the, the okay. so thing, following following that, well, hold on. So following that kind of logic right there, how do you know that anything in the Bible represents God's will or God's words or uh, what God wanted to communicate to humankind. How, how do you know that any of it is, is even accurate? I promise you, if you, you can, if you, if you actually read it to interpret it and not read it to dispute it, you can, you can see in your life, in, in all of our personal life, I'm not saying you in your life or them in their lives, you will see it in your life. If you actually read it to understand it and not to dispute it. 
I do. I do like, read like it I to understand it. I, I don't understand why mm-hmm. you're automatically assuming that I'm reading it to dispute it or something. I'm reading it to understand what God is trying to tell humanity or what God is trying to communicate to humanity so that I can make my own conclusion about mm-hmm. what God is telling us. Like as far as like, uh, not as far as like whether or not God is actually saying it, but like the ramifications of what God is telling us, like the commandment to go and take slaves or the commandment to force mm-hmm. young virgin girls into sexual slavery, like those types of things. Uh, I'm I'm saying like I'm reading to understand what God is saying so that then I can come to a conclusion about what he's saying. So it's not about disputing it. It's about determining wh- what kind of God or what kind of being this God is. But you see that you see you you get caught up in the academics of it. It's like it's like a how, how am I getting caught up in the academics of it by reading the words on the page? That's not getting caught up in the academics it is, of it. That's it, just you, understanding the words. It. You're trying to understand it in your human way before you understand God. And it, what other way no, you, is I, there to understand me, words me, that are okay. written on a page in a book? Let me make an example for you. Say, say somebody who studies engineering and somebody who's been working in engineering for 20 years. You know what I mean? The so one person can maybe go into the college. Listen, just, just, just give me a chance. The one person will go into the college after the 20 years. They could get the degree. But before they they get the degree, they're already better at the job than the person who has the degree. Now, just follow my logic quickly. If you first experience God, that is when you can put the verse to what your understanding is. I don't know what your personal relationship was with God or is with God. Okay, you don't have a relationship with God. But if you don't believe in God and you're reading the Bible, you're automatically going to look at all the things that don't hit with your understanding. Or because you might, because you don't believe in God, you believe in something else. So your belief system and what you believe is right is based on your current belief system. So if you read the Bible through that through that lens, you are just going to look for things that don't align with what you believe is right or moral. Or do you know what I mean? No, I mean me pointing out issues that I have with the Bible is me explaining why I'm not convinced of the Bible's truth or that God is any kind of good God. Like that's me explaining my position. That doesn't mean that I can't recognize like the good things that have been put mm-hmm. into the Bible, but I also recognize that those good things that are present in the Bible exist in other civilizations outside of the Bible and prior to the Bible being written, even prior to the Torah being written. So that's just me recognizing Uh that the Bible is not the source of those good ideas that you're talking about there. And I would love to hear what your explanation is for Numbers 31, where God commands an entire group of people be slaughtered and young virgin girls being taken as sexual slaves. I mean, if I'm misunderstanding this because I have a biased sort of position, Uh, about it, Mm -hmm. then you explain to me how that is a good story or a good thing in the Bible and a good commandment from God. I'll be totally honest with you. I do not have an answer for that question. I'm not, I did not study the Bible. I'm not a scholar of, 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 of the actual doctrine. And I don't, I don't fall into the academics of it. I, I know as might sound weird. I don't, speak to him and get replies, but I know God and I literally, I embody Christ every day and it has positive effects and it works properly. And everybody that's similar to you, closer to my, to my friend group, closer to my family group, who has, who I've get into more personal conversations with, I don't know how willing you are to speak about um your experience with God and getting out of the experience with God. But when I actually sit down and have proper conversations with people, I'm able to link everything into their life to where it actually makes sense to a point where they're like, you know what? Everything doesn't come from nothing. It must have to come from, it has to come from somewhere. And a a sort of, okay. Some of them are even, that's not not what the scientific theory says. So that that's not what the scientific theory says, Uh, like the, uh, the, the big bang theory or the, um, the uh, uh, you know theory of the inflation of the universe. It, it doesn't say that everything comes out of nothing. That's just not 
that like that's a nonsensical sentence. It, it doesn't represent anything in science and it doesn't represent anything that anybody's arguing for. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't understand why a lot of religious people bring it up because that's not what our argument is. <laughs> All right. I understand. But remember in the comment when we were coming to set up this call, I said that I would I would try to do this without using spiritual. Uh, uh, what's the word? Verses from the Bible. Sorry. Because I didn't, okay. I didn't read read verses of the Bible and prepare to come here and try to school you on anything. That's also one of the reasons where why I didn't want to have a live thing as well because I didn't want to have a thing where we have a rebuttal and people are also in the comments and then it ends up being a thing where one of us is embarrassing each other on different things. You know what I mean? That's not basically a goal okay. that I have here. Well, I mean, um, it's not. So I'm, my if, my goal is to have is just to have a conversation about beliefs yeah, and everything. Well, yeah. So it it, it yeah. seems to me. Like, like you believe in Jesus Christ and, and God and Jesus's relationship to God being that Jesus is God and the only, only path to God. Um, but you seem to have a very selective idea about who God is and who Jesus Christ is. So to me right now, it seems like you've cherry picked the best parts of Christianity and you've sort of come up with your own version of it that, and that, and that, kind of encapsulates your faith is is that correct or no i don't i don't think that's correct at all to be honest with you you might like like i said maybe we're not on the same page in terms of understanding where i say i say things in a way where someone with your mindset wouldn't really take it in the way that you that i would expect you to take it or not expect or intend for you to take it if that makes sense it's almost like okay I mean, so so the reason why I came to my conclusion is because you said that you don't know everything that's in the Bible and how God is described in the Bible. So what that tells me is that you've concocted a cherry-picked version of the God of the Bible and Jesus Christ in order to believe in it. And those represents the uh, most appealing aspects of both God and Jesus that come from the Bible and things that you've kind of just heard in conversations or in maybe in sermons or something like that. And so that's why I came to the conclusion of you just sort of concocted your own version of Christianity that appeals to you personally. No, I, and my, my relationship with, 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 God and whatever's in the Bible and Jesus has got nothing to do with the mental state of being. It's got everything to do with changing it, my heart. It's and everything and to that, do with your mental state behavior. of being. I mean, religious beliefs in general to, have 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 a relationship to your mental state of being. Like be- beliefs in general are about your state of being. So I mean that. I feel like that's just a nonsensical thing to say. So, uh, but I mean, how can you, so, so you, you know, like, uh, I guess you have a personal relationship with God, but what do you have to base that on other than, you know, your misunderstanding of the uh, big bang theory? Okay. Can you be more specific with the question? That seemed very, pretty broad. Well, uh, so you mentioned how you, you know, you understand God or you have this personal relationship with God and you know enough to to know that, you know, something doesn't come out of nothing. It's got to come from somewhere. So that's one particular mm-hmm. argument uh, for why God exists. But can you name another yeah. argument that's an, an actual like something that's a counter to an actual argument that uh, mm-hmm. atheists or scientists use uh, to explain reality or explain uh, stuff now without God. Like, give me okay. another piece that's of that, evidence I like for that God. Question. Let's yeah. Okay, let's let's look at something like this. Do you recognize evil in the world? Uh, I I recognize uh, like moral foundations, and I recognize that there mm-hmm. are actions that I consider to be bad. And e- evil has a bit of a religious connotation to me to it, but I, I can understand the concept that you're trying to communicate here yeah. as being so you, um, ab- mm-hmm. abhorrently bad or wrong. So do you be, do you not believe that um, there are elites or people at the top that control certain industries that try to make influences that are that are against people's best interests and in, in, in terms of helping them thrive? 
I mean, I, I, I do believe in, uh, that a lot of society is class-based and so that there, mm-hmm. there, that entails that there are people at the top of the pyramid that make it harder for people at the bottom of the pyramid. The way that you're putting it though, the way you're characterizing it makes me think of a, the Illuminati. And I'm not sure if you're trying to go that direction, but, um, I, yeah, I do just, agree just, in, just, in a class-based society. Get- Okay. Yeah, now I'm just I'm just I'm just asking so I can get what what your thoughts are on it. So if you if you are actually pursuing God, you'll start to see a lot where all the evils are in this world. And as as a as a as a man who pursues God, it's essential to see those evils in order to protect your family. Cause it, that, do you at least understand what I'm saying? For example, when you see I don't I don't think example, okay, that well so well, I, I don't think that you need God in order to perceive threats to your immediate family or even extended family or to people in general. I don't think you need God okay. for that, but I let understand me, what you're let saying. Me, let me, do you, you agree that, let's say a child that has been uh, abused by his, by his uncle, maybe beaten by his uncle, for example, right? Do you not agree that when he becomes a, an adult, you will, you will see the signs in somebody who is abusive better than someone else who was in abuse, correct? Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a good chance for that, yeah. Okay, so I'll put it to you like this. The the Bible is basically instructions before you leave earth, right? Basically in life. So as a Christian, are you supposed to raise your family and your children? You're supposed to raise them, seeing that, okay, this is how life works. These are the type of things that will happen when you do these kind of things. When you do this type of stuff, this is the type of outcomes you will get. These are the things that are happen that are more likely for you. Well, can you give so, me specific let, let me, examples let me, let me, about what you're talking about? Like from the because you're saying from like the Bible is an instruction manual, and you know this is what will happen if you do these things. Can you give me a more concrete example, kind of like you did with the uh, uncle beating the nephew? Mm. You see, that's the thing. I prepared to come in, not use scripture, so I don't. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna think about it quickly. Um. Okay, the the prodigal son, for example. Have you, do you know you know about that story? Um, I mean, it's it's been a while since I've come across that story. Uh, it sounds familiar. So it's basically in- they were basically. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give it to you in simple terms. There were two brothers. The one did everything right in terms of his father. He was a godly one. He was religious. He followed his whatever he was supposed to do. The other one went on his own. Did the last did his own thing, did, he broke away like ever, and he asked for his share of the family's worth, and the father gave it to him whatever, and he 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 blasted it out on his own sins and whatever. When as soon as he came back, the father did the Christly thing and took him back without anything, without asking for anything back, without any anger. He just forgave his son and took him back, and in that, mm-hmm. the son then realized that okay, this is actually where love is. He's been out there where all those other things, everything he's wanted to do. He doesn't find the fulfillment there. When he came back to his family, they still loved him as that example, right? So now when I come back, back to the story of the uncle, the example that I made, right? Mm-hmm. Just imagine in that context of somebody that was abused, afterwards they can recognize the signs of an abuser. Say, for example, in a coffee shop, they see, okay, now this person looks like he's looking at people, he's looking around, the way he moves his hands. When, when somebody walks close to him, the way he moves in terms of a reaction, I can see that this person has some sort of inkling in him, for example. It might not be right or anything, but because this person has been through this thing, they can notice things in some other people. That's one example. For example, a, a person who's a FBI profiler, those people normally have experiences before that can that allow them to have those abilities to see things in people, right? So the Bible is basically something that guides you through life to a point where you don't have to be beat up or abused or anything before you realize that this is where some of your own um, um, decisions will take you. But it also comes to a point where if somebody else who struggles with their own sin or their own evil, if they do something unto you, you doing evil or getting angry back at them is just evil multiplying in you when you should be just forgiving because that helps you more than it helps whoever else is hurting you. (laughs) You understand that this entire concept helps perpetuate toxic relationships in toxic environments where more abuse can happen, right? 
Yeah. Like uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not even, saying that you need. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Um, that that somebody shouldn't forgive somebody. You know, uh, like like for a past misdeed or something like that. But in the context that we're talking about this in, I mean, all it does is help perpetuate this toxic environment, and it only helps perpetuate the abuses of people by you know, uh, like somebody l- like giving forgiveness or whatnot, whatnot. It is for them, but that shouldn't mean that the person that abused them should be absolved of their sins, if you will, like is to use religious language here that shouldn't absolve them. Like, I feel like a lot in this particular instance, a lot of the times, at least this is how I understood it as a religious person. Um, that, you know, uh, forgiving somebody of something means that that person has been absolved. Like that y- you forgiving them is about, you know, uh, putting not only yourself at risk, uh, at ease, but also the other person at ease because the person that they have offended has basically wiped the offense away and has cleared it. And so now th- they don't have, like, they're not responsible for, you know, the, the past misdeeds that they had done. And in, in, in that aspect of it, it does perpetuate the abuses that are being levied against people, uh, in, uh, church, uh, communities. Uh, we see this and and there's practical examples of this in, uh, not only the Protestant faith, mm-hmm. but also the Catholic faith. Um, uh, or denominations, not faiths, but denominations being that you have so many people that are forgiving the abuser and are teaching others to forgive the abuser, which just allows the abuser to skirt under the radar and abuse more people. And so th- this entire idea is just ridiculous. The prodigal son uh, example here, the 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 nephew in your particular example should forgive the uncle for abusing him but i feel like the uncle should be held accountable for his abuses and while the son may move past it in his own emotional state uh that shouldn't mean that the uncle should not suffer any kind of consequences so i mean i i don't know maybe that's not the point you're trying to make but i kind of feel like that's the point you're trying to make and the point that i'm trying to make is that this whole idea is way too simplified as presented in the bible and in uh, christian theology the idea is just way too simplified and it's a lot more nuanced and you should it if god was really wanting to communicate uh, anything to humans he should have been a lot more nuanced instead of this simplistic kind of idea about forgiveness but if everybody loved god they wouldn't be abusers the, you made an example of, of <laughs> that is just you, not true no no no. i can't yeah, let that go yeah. that is simply you, you, not true you made an example if, uh, of there, there are people no, hold, hold on blaine blaine own, blaine. Own, mm-hmm. no, no, blaine blaine i i i need to get this out it's just simply not true. There, there are, are uh, pastors, priests, and, and everything that love God deeply, have the deepest love that? for God, but they use that. No, no, but they use that in order to uh, uh, abuse people sexually That's and love, physically. Then. That's not huh? love. That's using the intellect to corrupt no, the word to uh, to feed their own. There, no, urges. no, there was a That's priest. No, uh, Blaine, listen. There was a pl- a priest that literally blessed a Eucharist on the vagina of a small girl and said, this is how God loves you, and then proceeded to rape her. What do you mean that that's not like l- love that's, that's in their an, particular... That is an evil person doing something to another person. That is not God. That is, person who, right. that is a person no, 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 who I'm has not saying it is urgent. God. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is I'm not saying that that is God or that is God's love. But what I'm saying is that these people that are hurting other people definitely love God and they have God as the paramount thing in their mind when they're doing these abuses. So you can't sit there and say that these people don't actually love God or that they don't know God's love or something like that uh, when they literally do. Like these are people that are uh, so how engrossed can, in how the can religion. You, how can you say for for sure that they definitely love God? By by what by what scale or by what by what are you measuring their love by that is so definite? Well, I Just mean, you, that, it, 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 that's like asking me, how do I know I was Christian? 
because I'm telling you that I was Christian and that I know what I believed. There's no way you're going to know someone's true thoughts, but in order to even propose mm-hmm. that these aren't their true thoughts, you're automatically assuming that they're lying about something. So I tend to take people at their word on these cases because at their word, they're telling us, oh, I really love God. And so, I mean, I, I just, I don't know how to process it. Huh? That that's not your fault though, because people uh, people lie. So how can you just take their word for but, it and say that's definite? I'm not I'm not saying like because I can't know their mind. Like I don't know their mind. They may truly love God. There are plenty of people out there that truly love God, but then do horrendous acts, and they do it because they think that God is the one that's commanding it. You speaking for you the just like you, you're saying. I, can you no, define but, love for you're, me? You're saying, no, no, uh, but you're saying that, you know, you can't trust people because people lie. Well, at the same time, I'm saying that you can't automatically assume that they are lying. So we're kind of left in a state but if you where think that they, we that they don't know and we have to take them at somebody the word. Who loves God. Somebody who, who, who rapes a young girl is not somebody who loves God because somebody who loves God would not do that. I can tell you that but, 100% but God for a fact. commanded no, people no, no, who but, love God do not no, no, do that. But, but if you, Blaine, if you knew the Bible, you would know that God has directly commanded the rape of small girls. So you can't say that. Again, the word from God, not the word of God. That was written and interpreted by man. Uh, okay, well, see, you're just you're making an arbitrary distinction there because uh, there's the, there's no way to prove that those words are God's words. But the fact is, is that in the Bible it has God that is saying these things. So how else are we supposed to know God or know what God wants or what God has commanded in the past if we can't trust the book that supposedly relays His commands and ideas? Oh, yes. There are things that they lay these ideas that they can be implemented in today's life, but there are other things that you have to realize that these were written by men and interpreted by men, and these men lived in their time. For example, there are times where there are times back in the past where as soon as a girl got their period, sometimes it was twelve, sometimes it was thirteen, and highly respected men would marry them and everybody would know they were married. That was a that was a model thing two hundred years ago. Three, oh, no, sorry. Let me say a thousand, two thousand, maybe six hundred years ago. That was a moral thing. But if that person came into today's time and tried to do that, we would all crucify that person and try to put them in prison. But back in those days, when it was moral among people, they didn't see what they're doing was wrong. That was one. That's just an example. So those people who interpreted things so, back so then. So are you saying? Are you saying can't. that there's a good reason to marry a thirteen-year-old child? I didn't say that. I was. I'm making an example. Of how of of how the difference okay. of times are. I'm, I didn't I didn't I'm just making an example. You didn't let me finish also. Um, right. So things that are interpreted by then by an imperfect person is not exactly implemented in today's time by other imperfect people. Does that make sense? The only thing we can do is strive to be like Christ. We will never understand God or be how? perfect. Okay. But, but let, let me let me play off that because it's like, how do we know how to be like Christ if we can't trust what how Christ is described in the only book that describes Christ? Change your heart. Stop trying to be academic about it. John, stop trying to be academic. I'm an engineer. What do you mean? Stop being academic about it. I'm trying to make a logical sense of what you're saying here, but you're telling me you have to be more like Christ, but you can't trust what the Bible says about Christ. So how can I be more like Christ if I can't trust the source that describes what Christ is? You 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 crossing context now. First you said that about the the, the, the raping of girls, and now that's the word from God. Now you're saying it's Christ, and when Christ was, these are two different two different verses, two different times you are speaking of. Which which reference are you making? Well, because because you're 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 changing like the the topics here. Like when I was talking about the the girls being uh, raped or whatnot, that was when you were like, well, God wouldn't wouldn't command that. But it's like it's directly in the Bible, so you can't say that God wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, and you were using that as a determination as to whether or not somebody that was raping a small girl truly loved God. So oh. I mean, it it it. 
we're talking about two different subjects, admittedly, but you're kind of switching between two different subjects because you're because talking about – now I, you're talking about Christ you before we were talking about God. And I have to switch my train of thought. Okay. Well, that uh, wasn't my intention. I, I was just trying to, con- like, keep up with the conversation here. Um, okay. So – well, how do you let me let me ask this? Maybe we can we can get recentered here. How do you know what? since you're not reading the Bible or you can't trust what's in the Bible because it's interpreted or communicated by men? How do you know the qualities of Jesus Christ without reading the Bible? Okay, the well, the qualities of Jesus Christ; those things were written by eyewitnesses and people that were actually with Christ during his time. Those, those, those are totally different. That's why I say those are two different yeah. contexts. No, 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 but that's not true. Uh, the Gospels were not written by eyewitnesses. They were written by anonymous uh, authors some 40 years after Jesus supposedly died on the cross. Uh, so, I mean, none of those things are actual historical accounts. Uh, each Gospel copies off of the previous Gospels, with Mark's Gospel being the original Gospel. Uh, and Huh? No, I didn't say anything. I'm listening. Oh, sorry. I thought you were about. To, uh, I thought you were starting to say something. Um, I, I just, I don't take the Gospels as being historically accurate in, in the least bit. I think that uh, you can fabricate the basic Gospel story and all the uh, all the stuff from it uh, using Jewish scripture as well as other pagan sources like uh, other Hellenistic stuff like uh, the Odyssey and the Iliad, mm-hmm. uh, as well as other uh, other uh, literature pieces that were. Uh, in circulation in that area of the world at the time. So yeah. I don't think that the Gospels relate anything historical at all. Okay. I don't actually know how to respond to that. Like, if, if you don't think it does relate to it, I don't know. That's cool. But I, like, that's not a question that's you making a statement, in other words. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was just making a statement. You were talking about how do you know Christ, or I asked you, how do you know Christ? And you said, well, because the Bible says so, okay. and uh, that's so, a different conversation than, okay. than the Old Testament conversation. And, so, um, yeah. uh, but but my my point is, is that uh, if you if you can't trust what the Old Testament says about God, how can you then trust what the New Testament says about God? Because that's also supposed to be, of or from God. Because everything that I used to love when I was an atheist that I realized is wrong, when I change those things to be more Christ-like, the results are almost immediate. What so, does it mean to be Christ-like? Okay. Let's say, for example, like I've mentioned this on, 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 the, on, the, on the chat before of, of anger. One of the biggest things that I notice in today's time of people that especially amongst atheist communities. Like I said, I'm close to, I'm not going to say people like you because I don't think you guys identify with each other. I'm not sure. But many guys or people that call themselves atheists, I've, a lot of a lot of the reason that they're atheists and a lot of the reason that they start to change their mind is because of anger. And, and because I've been doing this now for a while, speaking to people, and I'm actually quite known in, by the people that I know for, for, for this kind of thing is, that I've realized over time that people's anger c- comes straight from the imperfections of their parents during the time raising them. And it's not that their parents did anything wrong, it's just that their parents weren't perfect people. And the, you take the good from people and you realize what the bad is and where you have to take away the bad out of yourself that you got from others. And especially with your parents because you are the spirit of your parents, if that makes sense. So a lot of people sort of have these this this sort of small little anger in, inside of them from things that they haven't dealt with from the time that they were growing up. And it's 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 the people that you would perceive that their lives are so perfect that their lives are like not not really difficult at all. But you wouldn't you wouldn't really understand when you when you actually speak to people about the things that actually bother them. And some people for some people a stab mm-hmm. is the same as a as a paper cut for somebody who hasn't been stabbed before. And I'll give you an example of somebody who who had both parents growing up and their father basically took him. He was, he's a fan of soccer. You guys call it soccer there. 
And his father was basically had a good relationship with his father, and his father sent him to shock and all of those things. But during the week, his father was always working and didn't spend any time with him and that. And they, he didn't understand that growing up. And this sort of thing he didn't realize contributed to why he has angry reactions to other things around his life, as an example. So, for, for example, like when he goes to watch a soccer game, the only reason he has an angry reaction when somebody makes fun of him when someone scores against his team, like I'm, I'm being specific here, is because there is an anger with him that started somewhere and it's basically built up from that. I'm not saying you can make a direct link and say, oh, because my dad did this and now I'm angry at the soccer fan. But because you don't deal with the initial anger, where all the, the, all the imperfection came from first, because you don't deal with that, that's where it's easy for you to be good to controlled by your emotions in other situations if you don't deal with those kind of things. And the only way you can do those things and get fulfillment is through Jesus and reenacting the behaviors of Jesus. No, so I just totally disagree with your conclusion there. Like I, I was fine with your whole situation up until that point where you're saying that only Jesus can alleviate that. I mean, it just sounds like uh, someone was emotionally unstable and they needed therapy and you can get therapy without Jesus or God. And that can resolve any of your anger issues or issues you might have with uh, your parents. Um, I mean, I've been through therapy, I've talked to a therapist, and I've resolved a lot of issues that I had uh, from when I was growing up. And I did all of that okay. without any kind of mention of God anywhere. So, I mean, I, I don't, I, I just disagree with your conclusion there that God and Jesus are the only ways that you can resolve that. I think that it's a way that some people try to resolve it, but uh -huh. I also feel like all that does is help mask the problems. Um, that depending on how it's implemented. I mean, I think that there could be some religious ways that you could actually deal with your issues, but uh -huh. um, just simply believing in God or Jesus, I feel like just puts a, a mask over it and allows you to just ignore it rather than actually deal with your issues. Uh, but like I said, that's very situational. It's very dependent on how the therapy is done with Jesus and God mm. in mind. But uh the fact is, is that you're making an absolute statement that only Jesus and God can resolve that. And that's just simply not true. 100% that's true. I'll promise you 100%. No, it is not. It is not 100% true. I'll it promise is not you, true at all because there are other, the, the fact that there are other, the, anger, the fact that there are secular, uh, the, the fact that there are secular options for dealing with your emotional instability means that it's not 100% true that only Jesus and God can solve it. You can solve those issues without oh, yeah. Jesus and God. There's there's uh, the Recovering from Religion Foundation that can help people out, and there's several different foundations out there that help with that. The Recovering from Religion but Foundation has a secular therapy project. To go to the no, no, no. I mean, drug. Uh, so, so I feel like you have a very skewed view of how drugs are used in therapy because drugs can help you, uh, can, can, can help you shift your mindset, but they're only meant to be sort of like a crutch sort of, sort of like when you're, when you have like a sprained ankle and you're using a crutch for a little while until your ankle heals. The same thing can be said about the drugs that are commonly prescribed while you're seeking uh, therapy for uh, emotional issues. Uh, they're only meant to be used for a few, for a little while until you can, you know, get by without them or until your therapy is complete enough to where you don't need them anymore. I mean, I was prescribed um, some antidepressants while I was going through therapy and what it helped me do was not spiral. Hold on. It's not spiral into a place where I was unsafe. Uh, and so that, that helped me curve that and it helped me get to a place where I don't spiral like that anymore. And so I no longer take antidepressants because I only use them for the time in which I needed them. Do you, would you mind telling me what was the reason you were spiraling and what your depression came from or what was the reason you were depressed? 
generally asking. I mean, it, it, uh, I mean, it, it, it came from personal issues with my past mm-hmm. and my childhood and everything like that. I'm not, I wasn't trying to say that you're totally wrong about why, why some people yeah, yeah. have some emotional, uh, stability problems. No, I, uh, I wasn't I trying to say that. Now, I do understand. Okay. Well, I mean, but I was just, I was just asking you, like uh, personally, if you're willing to, to 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 tell me, like, what it was. It I'm not. I'm not gonna. T- don't tell me what happened in your childhood. Just tell me generally, like a a quick thing as as to what spiraling means. In other words, what spiraling means? Well, I mean, typically yeah, in terms of what you mean when, when I talk you about say spiraling. It. Well, I mean, spiraling is just spiraling down this uh, hole of depression where you uh-huh. you have a lot of negative talk, where you you tell things to yourself that aren't true, and uh, and it's all just to make yourself feel worse because that's how you uh-huh. feel, and the 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 ne- negative self talk piles up on itself to where yeah. you get to a place where you're just you're not safe to even be around yourself. That's what that means. Funny, funny. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm, have you, have you, do you feel like you've overcome those things or do you feel like you've like left them behind or, or do you feel like, like if you spoke I, about it, you I have to speak through, about it, it's still tear up or just generally. So through, through the, through the use of, of secular therapy, uh, uh, mm-hmm. And I say secular therapy because God wasn't mentioned during my therapy. Um, I've I've been able to overcome those particular spirals so that I'm no longer a danger to myself when I'm in those spirals. Or or I start to spiral like I can easily pull myself out of a negative self-talk spiral. So let me just ask you, so let's let's, let's just make it a, a, a reference to times before medication for these kind of things existed how, how would you say people how, how come people were like more fulfilled those times and just dealt with life better than people like today where they've a sort of there are a lot of easy way outs instead of because faith and with works is a difficult thing finding fulfillment within yourself is not an easy thing it, it does take take work to find sense in or to find that there's no sense in, in your struggles but when people had no choice but to do that how come they were they were better off back then than, than now where people are just like a lot of people are just struggling and like like in terms of their mentally in terms I mean, of, of I, life journey. I have well I mean I, I have no idea if any of that's true. Like uh, people just struggling with life generally now. I think that with the the proper use of antidepressants, I feel like you can <clears throat> successfully um you know, uh, 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 bring somebody, uh, you know, out of the, of the clinical depression spiral. Mm -hmm. And I think that you could definitely set that person up to succeed in the future to not, you know, uh, uh, fall Mm -hmm. into those spirals again. Um, but I, I mean, I, so, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you're judging it. Uh, I don't know why you think that things were better in the past prior to antidepressants versus antidepressants now, which I'm not a medical doctor or a psychiatrist or a therapist myself. So, I mean, I just, I have no way of actually gauging any of that. I, I would need to do significant uh, amount you, of research before at, I actually had at, it. Yeah. If you look at pre-1930, for example, it's just, let's just use that timestamp. You will realize that in most scenarios, whether it's blacks or it's black communities or white communities, the father was in the home, the mother loved the father, children were were children were, were typically grown up by the time they were fifteen already because they were ready to move out by the time they were eighteen and start their own families and life. But nowadays as soon as they broke up those family things, it's almost like people struggle people struggle mm-hmm. like with, with life generally and the smallest of things sort of make them Keep up in a way, and I don't think that's a fault of him. But I, I feel I, like so. Over, I, over time, I have no idea like where the, you're going with this. I, I I don't know why the 1950s was the pivot point. I don't know why you're uh, just basically ad hoc uh, asserting that there are certain trends when I don't know that there are trends. I mean, mm-hmm. I, w- I will say that studies have shown that, you know, two parent households are uh, better for the emotional stability of children. But I mean, I think that has more to do with the emotional support that's provided um, and the negative uh, effects of like a, uh, <clears throat> of a, 
you know, a single parent household. But I think that mm -hmm. single parent households can also provide that emotional stability as well. It's just a lot more difficult. And so, I mean, I think that, again, the very nuanced conversation here about family dynamics and everything like that. But are you mm -hmm. trying to get at that there's some cause for this? Like there's some cause for, uh, you know, the this... Um, I guess shift that you're proposing because uh, I, I, I just, mean, I, 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 for one like thing, the, I don't know that yeah. there was a shift. I, I, I personally huh? believe that they are, they are forces that be that we don't understand. Like, I, I look like you, this might be foreign to you. It will be foreign to you, but I believe that our battle on earth, aside from our everyday life, that our main battle on earth is a spiritual one. And they are forces that be that try to like over the years, like, like I said, let me, let me bring that timestamp back. Back in those days, it was more or less the family loved God. Every Sunday, the whole family went to church. They had children. They raised them the exact same way, learned how to work. By the time they were 18, started their own lives. These are the kind of things that were normal. Over time, it's, it became normal for you to mock God, for atheism is now suddenly encouraged. For example, if we, if we had Facebook back in that time, you would, not have, you would not have the opportunity to have the type of page you have because you wouldn't have been allowed to indoctrinate okay. children in a way where they would be taken away from God, in other words. Just as an How example, am I indoctrinating children on my page? I'm, I'm making an example of if you had to take a Facebook, this Facebook page, and we had Facebook back then, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have been allowed right. to have your page. If, 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 no, I understand the point that you're trying to make, but you're trying to transport modern technology back into, into the past. If, But, but I mean, I'm you're saying, saying that I wouldn't that have now, the but... opportunity to indoctrinate children into atheism, and that's not what I'm doing on my page. I'm saying like, that, that, is what, that is what you'd be seen as in those days, because the smallest, the smallest mockery of God was not taken lightly those days. But because it's so okay, normal in society you think, today... You think that, Right. And you think that mm -hmm. people should be held accountable for mocking ideas now? That is not what <laughs> you keep on making your own spins on things. I just made a point. You had a rebuttal with a point. Then I cleared up why you shouldn't have a rebuttal. And then you start to say I'm justifying something. Well, no, because I, I guess I don't understand the point that you're trying to make with your analogy here uh, in that uh, other than to say that, oh, well, pre-1950, you wouldn't be allowed to be an outspoken atheist. And so somehow that's better. Like it's it, no, it, the it, point it, I'm it, trying it, to make is that, that allowed to, are, like, no, 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 no. So the about, point I'm trying the point I'm trying to make is there are forces that be that allow and push the like in modern times, the disbelief in God. And through that, that is where people lost their fulfillment and they rely now on governments and medication to be okay and all those other things it's where they could just turn to God and overcome everything that is difficult. That was what was normal back then. No, but in today's no, time, God does you, not you, solve you all of those problems. You solve how, your how, problems does, how does God solve poverty? How does God solve poverty? That was one of the things how you mentioned. Solve? How does God solve poverty? Mm -hmm. God himself doesn't solve poverty, but the people in, po in poverty overcome poverty through God. Uh, the United States of America has been one of the most religious nations, uh, you know, throughout history and it only got more religious after the 1950s. And there's in still Israel, okay. a, a poverty problem. There's there's a big pro poverty problem here in the United States, even though a majority of its citizens are religious in some kind of respect. So how do you explain like you're saying that like that's, the, the that's people a, that believe in God issue. would absolve that's poverty? That's a political issue when it comes to poverty. Why are you like listing poverty. it amongst your reasons for things that God would solve or a belief in God would solve? Like you, if just if people believed in God, there would be no body in poverty. You you brought it up and I just gave you an answer for that question. But are you giving a broader I didn't bring it up. Doesn't... You're the one that brought up God as a solution for poverty. You're the one that brought up poverty. I said God I'll be no, it wasn't God I, all of maybe, I maybe I misunderstood maybe I misunderstood you said oh, okay I said problems. So, I say so poverty, poverty is a problem that God can solve what's a what's a problem that God can solve well what do you mean when you say God can solve do you mean putting down his hand and picking up a cow and and and, and slaughtering it for you what do you mean 
No, I mean, you, you, you had a thing where your conclusion was if people just believed in God, then it would solve these problems. What problems are you talking about? For example, in your case, I'll give, I'll, I'll tell you because you, you gave me an example now of you. I'm not going to speak about any other people and try to be specific about it. You told me about your thing, so I can't be a bit more specific about this. But if you, I don't know how to put this. Out. You see, you might get offended by it, but I don't, I'm not. I'm not trying to defend you, but or offend you. But I, I believe that you had no reason to resort to any sort of mental drugs to overcome your depression. And even by the way it sounds, it doesn't sound like you've overcome it anyway. You just found a way to control yourself when you go through it. So even now, it's like you, 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 you don't have peace. In other words, you, you know, like I, like I mentioned in the start of the school, I don't have bad days or bad moods. I just be. If that makes sense. That that's I love a very, very okay. peaceful life. So regardless of what happens, my car could break down, someone could die, it does not matter, it doesn't affect how I feel, in other words, because I just be and I understand what life is through Jesus. So with you, it just sounds to me when you spoke to me about that, that you didn't overcome what the issue was. You just found a way to deal with the issue. So clinical depression is an ongoing thing that you don't just magically heal from. It's, it's a constant like struggle and there are good days and there are bad days. And I think that just ignore, like in order to, in order for me to take up what you're talking about here, and I'm not trying to speak about anybody else other than myself yeah. in order, but like if, if I were to put myself in the position that you want me to put me in, mm -hmm. then I would just be ignoring the problems that I have. And that causes nope, those problems to fester. Over, and I don't think that that is ignoring. actually a good way to, to handle it. See, you, you have this thing it's where, you, where you say that, that believing in Jesus, you just say, okay, I believe he exists. And that is overcoming. That is not what believing in Jesus means. Faith is not just, I believe faith is, I believe. And I'll show that this is what I do to show that I believe it's a behavior that comes with a belief. You go and just say, Oh, I believe okay, in God. But, and but I believe. How do you, but how do you know what it means to be like Christ-like? Like, what does that even mean at this point? Like, what does that, what, what, what does it mean to show that you believe in in Jesus or whatever? You see, in different in in with you, if you're asking me in a situ like for a situation like this, I can't tell you a general answer for that, and I don't know what the specific thing that you went through and got you to that point. So I can't tell you specifically what got you to that point and how you could find the answer in Christ to get out of that either. But I know for a fact that, that Christ is the truth. And I know this for a fact because okay. I've, 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 I've counseled 35 plus people. Not all of them believe at the end, but all of them have something to think about and all of them come back to me later on. And they say, you know what? No, after a while I realize that this is actually working. And when they see that how my life improves since they've last spoken to me, and not just I'm talking about monetary things, that's not what I'm talking about. It's just my being it personally and my general behavior. It's, they start to realize that these things are, it's not just words that I'm saying. It's not just a, a thing that I'm like, just do this and this will be your outcome or you will get to prison after you do this activity. That's not how it, how it works. And the thing, okay. the thing also well, important is that... So I, I, think, I think that just ignoring the issues that, that present themselves in your life is not, not any kind properly. of solution. I think that it's ignoring things. The, you, I am listening. Over, overcoming, overcoming an issue is not ignoring an issue. I would tell you, I could give you a proper example, but I don't know what it is that you've been through. But I could tell you, I, if, if I tell you what, what it was with me, then you're going to give me the reply of, oh, so you, you're applying your story to everybody's thing. And I don't want... That so I've, you've already shown that uh, it's a uh, it's useless for me to 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 quote a personal thing. Well, I mean, because I think that it, it's your own personal experience. Like in your own personal experience, you have, uh, you know, found um, that that it works for you. But you're trying. I feel like what you're doing is you're trying to make broad statements that this can help work for everybody, and it just simply doesn't. And uh, I feel like you're, you're too myopic in order to see how there are different therapies that work for different people. I didn't, I'm not going to say therapy itself doesn't work or has no good effects. Just like you said about religion where you said it doesn't have only bad effects or any of those things. But what I'm saying is 
you never have to get to a point where you need mental medication in order to deal with a problem that is overcomable through Christ. It's not easily overcomable. It's not. Are, that you, are you a doctor? Yes. Are you yeah. a doctor? I'm not a doctor. Okay, then it seems like you probably do not have a good grasp uh, in order to say that medication is not nece necessary. It seems like if somebody, if you're telling somebody medication is not necessary and you're not a doctor, maybe they shouldn't fucking listen to you. Are you there, Blaine? Uh, we may have lost Blaine here. Um, I'm not sure if Blaine's going to be back. Uh, I, I do appreciate everybody joining us today. It seems like we're going to have to cut this, uh, off now. All right. Uh, well, that's going to be it. Um, and, uh, I guess I will see you heathens later. Don't forget to stand up, use your voice and all that kind of good shit. Yeah, that was interesting. Bye heathens.